My name is Jason Carmel. I'm a neurologist and a neuroscientist. I run a basic science laboratory where we study the effects of electrical stimulation in rodent models of human disease, particularly spinal cord injury. And then I see patients, mostly kids, with injury to the brain or spinal cord resulting in paralysis. My laboratory is focused on restoring brain to spinal cord connections. So we see the paralysis that results from spinal cord injury as being a disconnection. A disconnection between the brain centers that initiate movement and the spinal cord centers that execute that movement. Fortunately, most people with spinal cord injuries have some of these connections still. So more than half of people have some movement or sensation below the site of the injury. Even in those people who can't move or feel below the site of the injury, there's still these connections as we've seen through MRI scans. And so we think that there are spared connections that if we simply made them stronger, they could restore function. My laboratory focuses on making those spared connections stronger. We see the brain stimulation as being compatible with many other different types of therapies, whether it's conventional therapies that people with spinal cord injury get when they get admitted to a rehabilitation hospital after their injury, as well as some of the advanced therapies that people like Dr. Backless and Dr. Hay are coming up with. So whether it's replacing new cells in the brain and spinal cord that Dr. Macklis does, or getting cut nerve fibers to regrow the way that Dr. Hay does. Those new connections will need to be reinforced in order to become functional, and we think that electrical stimulation is the way to do it. So what we're looking at here are these direct brain to spinal cord connections, and we're looking at the connections as they come from the brain and enter into the spinal cord here. The initial grant from the Travis Roy Foundation was focused on brain stimulation. And we found that after paralyzing injury to these direct brain to spinal cord connections, brain stimulation helped make them stronger. And the way it did that is to promote sprouting of the nerve fibers as they come from the brain down to the spinal cord. The stimulated fibers sprouted out in the spinal cord they formed functional connections there, and the rodents with the stimulation got better on a task of skilled walking. So why electrical stimulation? We're essentially using the language of the nervous system to help repair it. The thought of I'm going to move my forelimb in a rat starts here, and then that impulse gets carried down all the way down to here, which is where the spinal cord is. So nerve cells talk to each other with brief electrical impulses. It's the activity between the cells, the electrical impulses, that strengthen their connection between them. And we've studied this mostly at the level of the spinal cord, where with electrical brain stimulation, this direct brain to spinal cord connection, the nerve fibers grow out like plants with miracle grow. They go and they sprout with some specificity. We are delighted when really great scientists are working on neuroprotective strategies, strategies for making more people walk out of the hospital or have more function when they get out of the hospital. But I think we also need to address the large number of people who are fully paralyzed or partially paralyzed and have been for many, many years. The work that the Travis Roy Foundation has funded us for now is to pair brain stimulation with spinal cord stimulation. So we have a bit of an obsession with this direct brain to spinal cord connection. And we've learned through a lot of basic neuroscience experiments that cells that fire together wire together. The only data that we have are from these animals that were injured two months before they receive the electrical stimulation. Everything in the rodent is faster. So we think that the two months in the rodent means years in the human. We don't want to create a therapy that's just applicable to the 11 or 12,000 people who are injured each year in the United States, but more the few hundred thousand people who are spinal cord injured. 
In addition to Travis, my twin brother is spinal cord injured for a similar amount of time. We want therapies that are going to be able to make a difference in people's lives who are spinal cord injured and have been for years. So we think this is a practical therapy for chronically injured people. The work that we do is hard and it requires an intellectual engagement and I think that it requires an emotional engagement as well. What you'll find from the best scientists is that they have their mind in it, but they also have their heart in it. And I think without that, you couldn't do the sort of difficult things that we have to do, which is discover things that people have never known before. So I want to thank the Travis Roy Foundation for supporting my work. Having worked with them now for a number of years, I know that all of them volunteer their time. And they're supported, of course, with the people who actually do the fundraising and give their dollars. And having been involved in some of those efforts, I know it's hard work. And Travis's personal story and his charisma obviously bring people to it. But also, what people need to know is that all the hard work that they uh, did to raise these dollars, we're going to respect that as if that money came out of our pockets, that we know the, the hard work that it takes, and we're going to work just as hard to make those into science discoveries.